So the man himself, Mr. Cheeky Sport, Bible 5, you must have seen that podcast. He's an Arsenal fan. We'll talk about How that later. are you Gunners? We'll talk about that later. But he does some work for Arsenal as well. He's, he's doing it all. He's doing it all. Mr. Joe Bayer. How you doing, man? Good to see you again, Tyrone. my friend. From day one. So that's why we've come back to, to see where I grew up. And uh, yeah, what else are we doing today? That's man? pretty much. No, I'm just having a chat. Obviously, it's the show of real life conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, covering all aspects. Mm-hmm. You know, seeing how you are, first of all. Mm. Going through your struggles. It's, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. Yeah. So we just want to give the people um, a little bit of inspiration mm. for the next Joe Bears coming up in the world, basically. Come on. And the next Sealy shows and the next Tyrone. And, and, and <laughs> the next shows and, you know. Come something on. like that. Yeah. Yes. Something like that. Um, oh, but yeah, so where are we at the moment? You know what? Crystal Palace, South East London. This is where I grew up. Uh, what's amazing is I grew up with Tyrone, actually. We used to kick ball together. Bad ballers. Bad Bad ballers. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna toot my horn. Listen, I can say nothing but half motion up. <laughs> man was cold, innit? You know what I mean? Them phantom injuries stopped man from making it pro. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, nah, you know what? We grew up here. When you're growing up, it's all about kicking ball. It's all about kicking ball. Every day I would find myself at Harris uh, Academy, jumping fences, um, just trying to get some ball time, man. Do you know what I mean? Just trying to kick some ball, whether it be indoor, outdoor. I was on it, man, and um, this is where we redefined our skills and street ball, innit? Talk to us like, about, obviously, the start, um, you know, like, growing up in the area. Yeah, great. Not to sound cliche, but we're from South London, innit? Yeah. So. But you don't know it when you're growing yeah, up, Yeah, it's true. You know, people go like, yeah, you know, where I grew up and I hear that. Mm. We're proud of where we grew up and stuff, but when you're growing up, you don't know that the chances for you to fail are high. Yeah, it's true. You don't know. Because if you ain't got money, you just think, that's it, it's cool. Because your neighbours probably ain't got no money either. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's mm. not like, it's a bit mad. It's only when you do certain things or you go to certain areas where you think, oh, this is nice. I used to think going to Dulwich was like a different country, bro. Mm. And if, mm, for real. if you guys know, Dulwich is not, and I mean the nice parts of Dulwich. <laughs> like if you if you guys know, Dulwich isn't too far, but you, pop, you, you drive past <laughs> Dulwich and you see the houses, you're like, oh, rah. This is, you know what I mean? It feels mm. like a... Union in Portsmouth? I went Union in Portsmouth. I actually know that. Yeah, but yeah, growing up, it was just about kicking ball every day after school. You know, like, I wanted to be a pro. Type. Like, we just wanted to be the best players in the playground. No, facts. That's the number one thing. No, facts, facts. To be the best Vivid players in the school well. team. You know what I mean? Facts, bro. Go to the trials, <laughs> bad it up. You know what I'm saying? No, facts. Shout out to Mr. Di Matteo and that. Oh, you know did. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. old school. Yeah, so uh, it's like mad. we just wanted to be the best. And it's funny because you go to, to you go home, you want to play on the estate with your friends or whatever it is, and you just want to improve mm. every time and, and, and hopefully get the trial that everybody... You know, there was always that you, like, yeah, I got trials for Arsenal. Arsenal, and Chelsea, yeah, yeah, for, yeah. You know yeah. Fulham. Mean? Fulham. 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 Yeah, facts. You know what I mean? Like, so <laughs> you just want to be the best. Like, the envy when I used to see some of these youths that played for pro clubs. Track suits oh, and that. In their track I, suits. Honestly, like, I was interested, but I hated you. Like, I really did. You know what I'm saying? And it, that's, that's what it was growing up. You know, you don't know that you're in poverty. Uh, and I'm not going to say that man was in like mad poverty because, mm. you know, some people were, but I grew up with my mum and my dad. Mm. So that really it's helped me. One of the me. lucky few. Yeah, yeah, it really helped me. And we got to a stage where after buying from car boot sale, my dad was one of the guys who came into the country and he had to restart his education. Mm. So he started off in college learning English, um, you know, English school. And then he went to uni and then, you know. He's like most people, he suffered racism at some workplaces, but then finally found himself where he needed to be and uh, to help provide for his family, man. And that helped me to like focus in school. So when everybody else was doing a whole heap of madness, I was playing football. Yeah. So football saved my life. Do you know what? Bro. I say that to everyone, bro. Football it's crazy. saved my life. And my mum's prayers, of course, because yeah. my mum used to bring us to church every Sunday. And the reality is, even when I, I stopped going to church, I was able to go back to church because I had that foundation. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm it saying? It was easy to go back, it was, it? It, Well, I, I'm not saying it was easy to go no. back, but, but, you know, it's, you I'm went back. it easy, bro. <laughs> if I go to yeah. church, that would be easy. Yeah, well, now, but you know when you're out here, like, <laughs> But it was within me, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's yeah, what yeah, growing yeah. up was. You, you play with your friends, you, ain't, you all ain't got much, you mm. know what I mean? But you've got enough. Make the most of what you, you have. It's crazy that you say yeah. that though. Even to go back to what you were saying, so like not even realising like what oh. it was then. It was just so normal. Yeah. It's so normal. What? Car boot sales seemed like a bargain, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Bargain. Like even before I grew up in, 
in like Crystal Palace. I grew up in um, New Addington. That's Queen. I mean? Well, it's it's like twenty five minutes from here, but you you grow up over there and listen, it's it's mad because. But especially back then, mm. in the early 90s, mm. yeah. yeah, 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 or mid 90s. It was very interesting. And now, when I see things change and I see the area, and again, I see everyone, and you know, there's all this gentrification stuff and Saint everything Costas. happening. Yeah, it's all <laughs> Starbucks it's all, and that everywhere. It's all changing, you know what I mean? <laughs> Coffee shops around the corner. <laughs> no, it's, it's good so, to see yeah. though. Yeah. These areas on, on the up in it, but yeah. obviously, there's, there's, there's negatives and there's positives. To yeah, it. man. So, um, um, and that's it, really. And one of, one of the bits while we're walking, through South Norwood Lakes is because, again, this was my local park. I'm really thankful for these places because otherwise we would have been stuck. Uh, we would have been stuck at home all day long, which mm -hmm. we love PlayStation and that, but obviously sometimes you've got to come out and play. And um, we used to come out and play on Just around here, yeah? Yeah, these fields over here. Uh, anyone from who knows South Norwood Lake knows how important these places are, man. That's where you used to put the ankle weights on. Uh, yeah. See, Ty knows that I used to, I used to be on my CR70. So I'll train. <laughs> I used to take ankle weights so seriously. So I'll train with my ankle weights. Then I used to laugh at me like, what are you? Super why serious. Are you, why, are you, why are you training with ankle weights? And I never played, made it as pro as well. That's what makes it worse. <laughs> but, and then what I used to do, this is how mad I was. I'll wear ankle weights for the first half of a football match. So that the second half, I can be even quicker than the opposition. It worked though. That, that was for his me. idea. Did but it? I, yeah, for me it worked. It did. I'm like, I can't even lie. It did. Fair enough. I can't even lie. It worked still for me. So you, you gained an extra yard, yeah? Yeah. What? <laughs> Ask the man them. No, Come on. It's good though, man, because we're going back to the beginning, man, and this is what yeah. it's about. So this is it, yeah? This is it. This is like as, as dry as it looks. You know what I mean? As rough as it looks. You know what's nuts about this pitch, yeah? Is that when i'm when i was here during covid times mm. i would come and i would walk in the park as well okay and um i'll be real with you like i went through like a lot of stuff during covid like most people in it mm. like private stuff personal stuff and just the ability to see everyone come back to the park mm. you know adults kids because people needed that mental release you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was one of the best 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 times in that sense that i can remember and um, so sometimes you ain't got to go places and spend loads of money. It's the community. Facts. You know, and during those times, people were actually supporting each other because everybody knew people were going through things. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? And what I'll do, I'll come and I'll play football or I'll come and I'll do my calisthenics training here. Uh, just press ups, pull ups. So this sometimes. was like your release, basically. It's my release, you know, like I remember going through some personal stuff, walking around this park, not really knowing when something will happen but mm. i used to i like the greenery area you know and i'm gonna carry on walking through parks now I'm, now i like walking through parks and that. it's good and I carry no, it's on good through parks. it's good for the mental as well yeah man so for me you might think it's a joke man i do this thing <laughs> come on ah. yo mind your jacket you don't split that with them arms ah. bro you know what i mean a solid one <laughs> one and a half you know what i mean but yeah so I mentioned there you touched on um obviously like the, the struggles and so on that, that you've been through recently um yeah you know without going too much into it what on 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 the surface what do you feel has been the biggest struggles for you since you know what's um, been happening with other socials and etc. I think I think it is I'm pretty transparent as much yeah. as I can be I think socials you're always portraying a life that everything's fine mm. you know, I'm Joel Bear and I travel here and I go to this game and I'm just the happiest fan going but deep down inside I was having a lot of I was going through um, court cases where I was fighting for my child do you know what I mean mm -hmm. and things like that man one and that come on come on but you know what I mean but, you but, you don't, it. but it's, it's mad because mm -hmm. you don't get too many dads that want to spend the time with Facts. their kids and are fighting for their kids and and um, sometimes you, especially during that COVID period where mm. sometimes it will be used as an excuse for you to not see your kid like weird things like that yeah and and because no one knew when it was gonna stop or happen you're just having to wait via the courts and as I mentioned earlier on you're walking around and you don't know what the dates are when things will get better and everyone's going through mental stuff not seeing their family and mm. it's just no no reasons needed sometimes but you know it was one of the toughest time of my life but i had some fantastic people around uh to really help me like i had i had my sister I had my niece ariel obviously i had my mom my dad i had people with them from my church that was really supporting the thing uh shout out to 
people like Kesta, um, Joanne was there the whole way through. Um, I had loads of fantastic people, man. Mm. Like my cousin, Christian, um, just, man, even people, our friends, mm. Danny Gladwin. Big up Gladys. Shout out Shout out to Danny, shout out to Ryan as well. Ryan <laughs> called me like, Henry. really, really encouraging me to no, keep on good. going and stuff like that. And now, now this park that I was struggling through, Sometimes I now take my daughter here as well. Sometimes, Full you know what I mean, just because. And you know, kids they don't look at it and go, "Ah, oh, this is dead." As mm. long as they can get to a place where they can play and they can do what they're doing, you know what I mean. They're happy, and Facts. that's why I can't wait till the, the time the summer comes and I'm just flying out the whole family. Yeah, we are going on holiday. We are going. Where are you looking all to going. go? I ain't going to tell you that. <laughs> but we're going. In terms of, um, you know, like the socials and stuff, because everything does look pretty um, on there. You know, no one, no one's kind of showing their low, their low points, it's all like the highlights on there. So the fact that you've given us an insight on what it's really like, mm. even though you are, you know, considered one of the most influential people on socials in, in the culture anyway. Really? Uh, yeah. I thought I was on, Harry Panera. No. And poet. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it's got to be them, man. And steve and that, you know? <laughs> No, nah, you're doing bits, man. You know you're doing bits. Yeah, nah. you can't, everyone's you, doing their not, thing. Not, like, everyone, not everyone sits down with Rio every week, I'm trying to say. Yeah, but it's, everyone it's, gets that it's privilege. more than just that. It, it's, it's changing the face of the culture, man. Facts. Like, in different ways. Not just in front of camera, not followers, but also behind the camera. Giving opportunities, creating projects, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Showing brands that you can trust. Yes. You know, young men, young black men, you know what I mean? People from all over. These are things that we have to do to make a difference. You know what I'm saying? Nah, so, you're definitely knocking nah, down doors. It, nah, come on, you're knocking down doors. Yeah, man, so where are we at right now? South Norwood, High Street, my barbers, Mike and Mo, they've been cutting my hair for time. So they're keeping it's you fresh, It's mad though, because I got like three barbers. I know that's criminal to some people, but I do. You know what I mean? <laughs> three so, barbers? Yeah, we're checking out two of them. I got trust, I got trust issues, boy. You know what I mean? So three like, three barbers? Yeah. He got his own show. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, fair enough, fair enough. So, South yeah, but... Norwood, you grow up, obviously, there's a few things that are local to you. Mm. Your football pitches, your barbers, mm. um, going to games, and you know what I mean? People like Mike, you know, he's been cutting my hair for time, I've known Mike and Mo for years as well. Okay, okay. And it's just part of the things, when people talk about your community, there's no, nothing facts. more that you can really say. I bet you know there's some mean? conversations in there that you can't repeat. Yes, bro, these guys were chatting <laughs> relationship stuff to me last <laughs> week, bro. What are you talking about? Like, sometimes we have the conversations, obviously the football conversations, everything that happens in a barbershop. So who does everyone support? United over here. Yeah, my guy. Arsenal, Arsenal over here. Yeah, my yeah, guy, I mean, my we've guy. got a couple of Arsenal man and stuff over here as well. Oh, yeah? You know what I mean? Like, okay. so, yeah, man, you I know what it is. Some, someone that does go with you. Yeah, Stop them, them people that... Whoever's really top, they support you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? One week I they support that. Man City, one week they support, you know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> I hear that. You know what we have a City band around here. No. Probably. Sometimes. You know what I mean? This way. I don't know. This way. It's like it's like winning, isn't it? I hear that. You know what I mean? Sometimes Mike, sometimes Mike will give some mad opinions or whatever. I'll just record him and I'll send it to whoever he's all about. Yeah. So the last stuff I, I recorded, I was sending it to Rio. I said, look at look at my barber, look at my barber chatting <laughs> chatting here. So like it's like we just talk in it. No, and, that's um, the essence. Yeah, but all love to see you do. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Guys, yeah, man. You don't know. Brother. Well, well, what's up, guys? Seely. Yeah. 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 Nice you. Yeah. 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 All right, bro. Yeah. Have your time, man. That's Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 man. Love. Bless. What? <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> you don't need to say that. Ed. I'm just trying to get the um that famous chandelier in. Nah, just forget it. <laughs> don't put any. No. No, not even. Just get no. it started. I'm not trying to talk about my home or anything. <laughs> Go on. Um, but speaking of speaking of chandelier, I just put a segue into into the uh, into the podcast and so on. So, talk to me, man. Arsenal. Well, no, it was cheeky sport first. Yeah. Um. Then was it Arsenal? Well, I I work with like different company so it's not like I work directly only with Arsenal and stuff like that like okay. I've had the chance to work across the board so just to bring it back Cheeky Sport um, is like a company that I formed and I was banging it out with me and my friends going to different games uh, we became YouTubers off the back of it and it was a bit funny because I started the company but I I worked closely with David Alorca who he does a lot of the boxing presenting, William Hill, that kind of stuff now. Mm -hmm. He was a pilot at the time. I was working as a pharmaceutical analyst, like here in, in Europe. 
It was a bit mad. Did you just be qualified to do that job? I just went to uni. Okay. You know what I mean? So you got into uni? No, the reason I'm asking, I'm just... <laughs> no, the reason I'm asking, yeah. I, got, I, asking. I scraped out of uni. <laughs> I was messing around back then. Like, my first couple of years at uni, if you really want to go there. No, I want to go there. I'm just thinking of school days that like, not many of us... Yeah, well, the, into... listen, our school was bad. Yeah. I'm talking 22% pass rate of A to C. The school's closed down. Obviously, I came from that strict African background, so... I was getting them good grades regardless. I had no choice. You know what I mean? It wasn't even like an option for me. GCSE, bro, you had to get that bang. So um, then I went to sixth form and I didn't really do well there, to be very honest with you. My head was everywhere. Girls, you know what I mean? And then mm. I, when I stopped playing football, I started like focusing on music and stuff like that. And I just think my focus went away from school and that carried on when I went to Ruskin College and then when I went to, when I went to John Ruskin and then when I went to uni first couple of years I just wasn't my head was not in the game and it wasn't until um I'd actually broken up with someone and I and I just realized that right like girl ain't gonna want you if you're dumb you know trust me you know what I mean so I I then started taking uni very seriously and then I just went through it man it was good so and then after that um I just by that time I'd made a decision that I wasn't going to be a failure at anything I did so I started working in pharmaceuticals um, as an analyst, just flying the world, doing real cool stuff. Mm. Um, but I knew just before like, I'd met my daughter's mum, I knew that I wanted to do something for myself. So I formed the company Cheeky Sport because I remember seeing YouTubers online. Like I saw one of my guys, Adam McCola, and um, Sam, um, Sam, who presents for Man United now, mm -hmm. and they were talking to class of 92 on some red carpet thing. Mm. And I was just like, raw, regular person like me, interviewing a Man United player, not thinking whether they got paid for it or not, not thinking whether, you know, what, what did they do in the other hours in the day or whatever. But it was just so intriguing to me. And then I remember looking at Robbie from AFTV and he was like talking to fans about mm. football and not thinking, is he doing this full time or not? Because he mm. wasn't at the time. Mm -hmm. But I just thought, this is the sickest job ever, yeah. ever. It's opened your eyes like, to it. What? And then I just started going to games because they had Arsenal covered and Man United covered. I was like, why don't we just do everything? And then I started doing it with Akeem as well. Mm -hmm. David Akeem, who owns a peanut butter company called The Wild Peanut. Okay. And then later on down the line, Jermaine um, Jacko, Big J, who he's an A&R at Murky Records with Stormzy. Okay. So at the time, but he was he was like a jeweler and other stuff as right. well back then. So we just so there was four, four of you. Yeah, there was also my friend Nick and Ryan, but you know, they went on to do their own thing. Because mm -hmm. it's not an easy commitment. Of course, of you know, course. Like, for me, I felt like I was more committed to it because it was my baby. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, you know, like, but we used to just travel up and down the country, go to different games. I'll come back, edit the videos. Um, and then we just kept growing, going viral, catching the eyes of companies like Lad Bible, Arsenal. Proper. Um, United for Dave. Um loads of companies nike mm. we made great relationships with nike great campaigns with them really took us under their wing at one point can i just stop you there so yeah. what, what like what's your mentality going through that though because that that's like the come up in it what, yeah what's, what's no the... sleep mm. like if you love sleep like, i love my bed then forget it it's not for you like i'm talking my body was actually in bits for a couple of years after the traveling because i used to not sleep for so many hours mm. and so you're doing that and you're also going to work and you've just had a baby. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was mad. It's like pressure. You know, and, and then it was mad because you're not with the mother of the child, mm. but you're still trying to do this thing. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. So it wasn't easy, you know, but at the same time, um, I felt it, you know, I thank God because God really, really hand, had his hand on me, man, no doubt. And, um, and yeah, things were just growing, moving, moving, just trying to, capture your, your contracts. Obviously, mm. people don't know this, but you're always trying to secure jobs and do this and do that. And then at one point, we switched the the, the lane of the company because obviously social media, it changes every mm -hmm. year, every two years. Can't get too comfortable and, oh, I'm just sick on TikTok or I'm just sick on Insta. Like, try to be well-rounded. Obviously, you can focus on one or two things, but be ready to switch at any time. And don't take breaks because you can take a break and it becomes tough. You know, try to not take breaks mm -hmm. if you can help it because it's so tough. 
it's so tough. One minute, something might not be working for you, but if you stay consistent and you're fluid, meaning you're ready to change, you're ready to do this, something can just bust for you at any minute. You don't know. But it, because some people, they get to a stage where they don't even respect the views, but they just respect your graft. Mm. And sometimes that's what it is because I know people who get like the maddest views, but sometimes people see me and the respect they have for man is because they just know I've been doing it non-stop for years. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, that's all it is. That So they say, nah, you know what, we've seen your work. You, it's like you get a, a tick. Yeah, yeah, Obviously, yeah. people shouldn't be able to validate you, but it's also really nice when your peers recognise you as a hard worker or, as, you know, as someone who does this thing. So um, Just to touch on what you said there about the views and stuff, I mean, would you say people shouldn't get disheartened? Yeah, I mean, it's tough not to because we're in a game when, you know, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Mm. (laughs) But at the same time, I look at the the real creators and artists. If you look at someone like Drake, Mm. when he did the song with Santan Dave. Last week, bro. Yeah, when he did the song, when Drake did that song with Santan Dave, Mm. he didn't do it because of Dave's views. He just did it because he thought he was sick. Yeah. And it gets like that. Mm. Where some people, they just respect you because of your grind and your hustle, you know. And, um, you know, obviously it helps when you've got your own audience. Let's not lie. Mm-hmm. But there's some people that you just respect them, innit? Like, I'm not doing this for views or whatever. Like, the CD show's brand new, but I respect the hustle. Man's come down in a flipping van <laughs> like they're going to spray up something <laughs> with a whole team and a whole thingy. They're ready to work. Hey, it's soon to be a veto though. You know. So like all you show for companies. There you go. Yeah. You know. They're coming. So when you see mm. things like that, and it, it sounds serious, he's got everything lined up and everything, you're like, yeah, cool. It's not just your friend, this it's like something that can be serious down the line. And Facts, hundred mm. percent. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm. Um That's why I'm hard on my boy, you know. Like I'm not yes. being like I'm like Timing. I'm so glad you said this, actually. I mean, and, and I know I am. No, I'm so because, glad you said this. <laughs> no, nah, because you see, man, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm that guy that I'm not just going to give my kids everything. I love my daughter to <clears> bits. <throat> I love, you know, I might probably have stepkids, but I'm going to love them to bits. I'm going to do everything. Mm. But I'm going to remind them that you see this journey here, it's not for the faint hearted. And when you've been doing this for seven years, Lacking sleep, getting slapped around, mm. you know, doing things, getting whatever. Mm. You cannot come and give people the idea that this is going to be some thing. And even when people are like, raw your journey, you've done well. I'm thinking, have I? I'm, I'm on the way. Mm-hmm. But it's a long game. No, you have, been, you have been on me, to be fair. I have to. If it's you very, very, at an event, I'm like, why are you not there? Yeah, why are you not there? Yeah, yeah. I'm there. And I've been doing this thing for seven years. Why are you not there? No, oh, facts. Because we have to... That's the thing. Black people want... And I say black people, yeah. We you know, we want to support each other, which is great. But we also mustn't forget, you know, that there's a grind and there's a hard work. 100%. And we, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, And it's not just about giving passes. Otherwise, mm. you, when something real happens... Mm. We, we won't know how to react and mm-hmm. you're not actually doing the person a favour. Yeah. It's actually, you're actually... Damaging them, isn't it? I'm more, I'm tough, but then when it comes to it, if the work's being done, I'm, le- I'm lenient. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I start tough. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. if you don't start tough and you start soft and then you have to get hard, people get upset. Yeah, so yeah. So I'll be like, I've only got two hours and depending on what we're doing, I'll try to be flexible down the line. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you straight, I've only got two hours. And then you can deal with how you're going to deal with that. I hear that. Because that's the reality. Sometimes we're in a situation where if you've only got a player for 10 minutes, what are you going to do? Mm. You have to create the best piece of content you can. Mm-hmm. And you're not allowed to do X, Y, and Z. Mm. When me and Danny, Danny Gladden is one of our friends. We had, um, I took him to do a Nike shoot with me. Mm-hmm. He was a goalkeeper. Yeah. And I was just like, right, I need a goalkeeper. So I took one of my best friends down. And um, he'll tell you straight. We, we had players coming down and the club will be like, yeah, no, nah, he's not allowed to kick a ball. Like, but we're advertising football boots on a football pitch. What are you going to do mm. to get the player in the mood? What are you going to do mm. to change the atmosphere, to make it okay, to get a little cheeky ball, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To still get him to do things with a football. Like you have to think quick and, and work tough and be ready. So when I pop up, my man's camera, sorry, production team, but my camera things are already set up. Mm-hmm. Set up, ready to go. Like I'm not, trying to hear it from no one. 
because you need that level of pressure. It's like when we used to t- play football. Mm-hmm. If we didn't have our tracksuits, you don't start. Uh, yeah, yeah. Simple. <laughs> Shut up, Andy. Yeah, it wasn't just about what you're doing when you're in front of camera. And no, that. That's the easy bit. No, you're right. Yeah, but you're it's right. It's the prep and everything before Preparation it. Before, the fact. timing, the everything, because I can't talk to certain people as if I've made it. Mm. Like, that's why even, for example, if I'm doing something with Rio, yeah, as much as he respects me as a peer, I try to make sure that the job's done for, for them. Mm-hmm. Like, and if I'm slack, slacking, I'll say, you know what, I slacked on this, you know, I need to do better. Mm-hmm. Because so I try to have the attitude, not just with them, obviously it's easy to say five, but mm-hmm. when I'm working with anyone, to really try to push myself and scare myself. Okay. To not be comfortable. Out of your comfort zone. Yeah, to, to, to remember that I've got... Where does that come people. from, though, that... that that mentality that motivation because I've, I've been in this industry and i've and i've had bits of glory and you lose it because you're not focusing could be a project could be a top spot presenting could be anything mm. that, 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 again for the viewers and for people coming up now the step-by-step process of how that works that do, does he get in touch with you did you get in touch with him his team did um they just wanted me to check out their youtube channel where they think they can do better and so Sick. it was just consultancy really and um and then we just went from there and i was just honest it was just a bit it was a really it wasn't like we it was a relationship that we've been building for like since 2018. okay so you might have a meeting there with one of these guys then you won't and then even just small things were yeah. just happening over the f- few years right. just kept bumping into people kept bumping kept bumping in and just do you know what i mean just mm. building a relationship and then yeah. if you if they need something you can be there to help vice versa they were there just relationship building that's it. and then because I, I pitched a show to him once as well you just edit so but you can't take that to heart no, you just not. gotta be like but yeah he pitched it he said to me i want to do it i spoke to him and i was gassed i went away got the thing he done came back he didn't even reply i thought oh okay but you carry on going mm-hmm. you know what i mean because you're going to keep getting loads of knockbacks the whole time and then somehow without even really trying we ended up doing what kind of what was being pitched in the first place like, a few years yeah. ago yeah. so the, the, you know, I always say God has a weird way of making things happen. And so Definitely. I'm not Facts. really, I'm learning. I'm not saying I'm great at this, mm. but in some situations, I'm just learning to know that, look, just do the best you can. Yeah. And he will do the rest. Facts. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's definitely interesting. And I wanted to ask you that personally for me, that question yeah. was for me probably because mm. for me, that I, again, I love the show and just the scale of it, the way, like, and it's just going from strength yeah. to strength yeah. to strength. And, you know, it's one of the biggest shows now, so... It is, and we have, to, we have to make it bigger. Mm. I was complaining. I was just like, yo, we need to get this. We need to... Da, 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 da. Like, so we all kind of complain about what we want to do with it, but people are fully... They're fully committed on the show, just as we are, which is fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, Joe, I know you're, you know, strapped for time and so on. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, man. Got, just my, before daughter, my daughter's got to do a spelling test, so I've got to make sure that... I help her, you know. I, I mean? hear that, bro. Daddy, daddy, daddy duties first. Daddy duties, you know. Daddy duties first, man. Um, before we wrap up, um, how does the next, well, I'll say the next five or ten years, but how does the future look for Joel Bayer? What's... We've got to make sure we're building five to yeah. the best channel on the planet. That's what we want to do. You know, we're, go- we're going we're gonna to improve, but that's what we want to do. I really want that to be the best thing going and is this like your nucleus now? Is this the show that people are going to know you for now? or I think, be... I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Do you know what I mean? Okay. And obviously, I'm still doing my own stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I make sure that I go to the right events. I'm doing the right gigs. I'm, I'm building my profile the way it should be, you know. Uh, but on YouTube, on the YouTube space, that's my focus. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's get in some questions. Some little hot fires. I've got some written down here for you. So, um, what was it? Where did you get the Hubler? Like yours? Oh, can we also talk about that? Oh, I forgot about United as well. Can you just t- say to the people why like you don't like my club though? Seriously, I like your club. No, you don't. You don't. I, I really do. Okay. You look. You look. I was just telling you that Oli weren't the guy before you look. When you look, were like Oli, 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 he's at the wheel. I was like, but he's not. <laughs> and then everyone was getting at me and then a few weeks later everyone's on my side oh Joel was right like yeah no, but can I say it's something it's not personal can it's I... just I know innit alright look I, I hear what you're saying yeah that's that's the, that's the P that's the PR that's the PR, that's the PR that's answer is. listen I've known Joel from school okay yeah. from when his tie used to be here yeah and you've I get the rivalry Arsenal United obviously there's that as well innit 
Okay, so so there is that then, but you've never you've never said that though. No, but there is. That's natural, isn't it? Like obviously, there's the United, yeah, <laughs> Arsenal. You know what I mean? Like, you know, back in the day, it meant something when you played for Arsenal. No, facts. Remember? Yeah. yeah. Or oh, if if you knew someone that was in the Arsenal academy, it meant something. No, definitely. Like, back then, you if someone said they played for United Academy and Arsenal Academy, you would look at them in the same level. Yeah, no, fact. Yeah, yeah. Back yeah, in yeah. the day, you would. Who's the bigger club? Silly question is that? Just answer it, bro. Come on, man. Next. Question, Are you not gonna answer man. it? No. Nope. Right, that's that's my. I'll, I'll take the answer then. Yeah. Next, next question, man. All right. Cool. All right. That's not. That's not a question anyway. But and Huber, can you get me a deal or what? For what? For for a watch. You see, if I get like if I get to like series five, if we get to that series five. Can we... Bro, can we? This guy. This guy. <laughs> All right. What's what's your favorite city in the world and the country? There's nothing at home. London. London. Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's nothing at home. In in the world? You know what? I'll get back to you. You know when? On that one? When I get to travel the world with someone. Because then you really get to know what the person is. Because this journey is not about yourself. It's about the person you do it with. That's a good answer. I like that. It's a very good answer. Childhood idol. I've got a few. See them. Michael Jackson is number one. Facts. Come on, man. Man, they, when people say Chris Brown's the new Michael Jackson, I think shut your <laughs> mouth. I love Chris Breezy. He's the best, but man can't compare these man. Oh, Drake's the new. No, Michael MJ's Jack- MJ's like, like, MJ's the you goat. You don't know what <laughs> MJ's the goat. So, so let's just get that out of the way. Um, Michael Jordan. What an inspiring icon, Dave Chappelle, big Dave Chappelle fan, yeah, Chappelle's yeah, the boy and Eddie well. Murphy as well. Because when we were, when we couldn't speak English, his films were crossing international borders. You learned English, Joe? Yeah, I'm originally French language is first language is French. So, but Eddie Murphy, I knew him before I knew English. I knew his films before then. So these guys are, you know what I mean, top dogs. Okay, most prized object. I was going to say my daughter, but she's not an object. She's not an object, Yeah, bro. so <laughs> most prize. She's the person I'm proud of the most. Of course. You're not a materialistic guy, though, and that's credit to you, to be fair. Yeah, that's why I, you're struggling. Yeah, but, don't know, but you've got one. Come on, come on. I, I know you're not a materialistic guy, but let's not talk about the digits in your account. Let's not do that. So your most prized object? A trophy in Cradle Athletics. <laughs> That's our team. Big! Craig and Athletic. Shout out Andy and the boys. Yeah, man. Come on. Facts. You better look, you look better watch this as well. Yeah. Um, the best advice given to you? Be curious. I'm not saying I've always taken it, but be curious. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, because if you're curious, you ask questions. Uh-huh. And if you ask questions, you'll get to more knowledge. Mm-hmm. You've got more knowledge, it allows you to do what it is that you're trying to do. Knowledge is power, as they say. Exactly. Um... What day would you relive? I don't know, bro. That's a tough question. It is, isn't it? I don't yeah. know if I even... I mean, you can, it's a good question, but it's really, really tough. Did I even word that right? Yeah, what's the, like, one of the yeah, days you'd relive? One of your I'm best sure days? that I've got a good answer, but I don't have one for you now. No? No, nah, I might have to message you that one. You have to message that one. That's a good... That's a good question. Thanks. I'll take that. Um, what job could you do as well as your current one? Any. Like if and if I really want to do something, done. I'll do it, bro. Good answer. I like that. What skill would you love to master? Consistency and re- repetition. Now. When you're consistent in being doing something repetitively, immediately you improve and you become the best. Now, I do it, but if I can get better at doing it, I'm going to get better at my job. Okay, so you would like to master consistency in and repetition. In repetition. Yeah. You're a deep brother, you're in it. <laughs> when are you at your most happiest? When am I at my most happiest? Definitely when I'm around loved ones. Yeah. Um, when you're around the people you love, 
it's better than being at these events or doing whatever because these things are great for experiences but there's nothing like experiences that you share with people especially the people that you love mm, facts mm. Um, what small things annoy you the most? just I think professionalism when we approach things because I just feel like and we all do it sometimes we're all not perfect mm -hmm. but I just think there's like a million other people that can be better than us at doing what we do how do we become the best mm -hmm. do you know what I mean and I annoy myself bro in some things that I do I just think Joel should be doing better mm. like for example I should have more knowledge on what's going on with players in the championship I just feel like I should but I don't mm. you know it sounds a bit weird but I'm like if I did that then I could expand my horizon when it comes to even gigs because I'll be a high profile person that can talk about championship football mm. Why would you scale into that or why not I like yeah. football Cool. It's just time. It's the way you divide your time. Right. Okay. And finally, your biggest mentor. Say that question again. Finally, your biggest mentor. I don't know. I've got a few. I've definitely got a few. Rio's one. I just watch him. He doesn't yeah, even know it. It's not yeah, like yeah, I've yeah. said, do you want to be my mentor? I just watch him. Yeah. Just watch everything he does. Like, eagle eye watch yeah I've got a good friend of mine he's, he's like a brother to me his name's Arnold Sarfo I think the way he moves is really good um, and then there's just other people that I really respect mm -hmm. and appreciate how they move people like Stormzy like I just feel like he moves so yeah. correct yeah just I can't just I can't I don't know man mm -hmm. he just moves like nah, I hear you proper and um, he's grown into the role in it yeah and he's got faith like you've never seen before mm. so um i don't know what more i can say about those kind of people man like just big ups man too much love well there you have it man mm. thanks that's our hot questions man i appreciate it joel i gotta do my <laughs> my dad duties and that you get me guys it's been a pleasure man thank you so much bro no yeah, man, that was the first episode wrapped up. See the show. Um, had to, happy to be back. Hope you enjoyed it. On to the next one. And yeah, do that good stuff, man. Tell a friend, to tell your friends, to tell their friend, family member, whoever. Like, subscribe, comment, let me know who you want to see on the show. Let's go again, man. Wrap out.